Hi there, this is Mike Quinn, Nine Numb from Return of the Jedi, The Force Awakens, and The Last Jedi. You're listening to Canned Air Podcast. everyone and welcome to another episode of Canned Air, your tribute to comics and pop culture. I am Jeremy Colley. I'm Jack Doherty. And I'm Randy Hardenbrook. And boy, do we have a special guest for you guys today. He's been the guest of honor at the San Diego Comic-Con three different times. He's done artwork for Star Wars Celebration and then George Lucas himself has bought this uh, gentleman's artwork. He's won an Eisner Award in 1993 for his work on Alien Tribes, illustrated for Marvel, DC, Dark Horse. The list goes on. I could be here forever going on about this guy's uh, career, but he's probably best known uh, for his book, Star Wars, The Art of Dave Dorman. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome legendary artist Dave Dorman to the show. Dave, thank you so much for being here with us today. Hey, it's my pleasure to be here, guys. Thanks for having me. I want to have some fun today. We're going to be talking about Star Wars in our retro roundtable. Just in general, um, I don't, Randy, was there, there's no like a uh, hard angle on that, right? Just Star Wars. Just Star Wars. I figured it's about that time of the year, so. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Disney's really solidified the Christmas and uh, Star Wars tie, haven't they? Yes, they have. Yeah, but they have, there's nothing wrong. coming this year, though. I guess it's the off year, right? Because the last year was uh, the last time. Well, I mean, we had the second season of The Mandalorian. Well, last year. Yeah, yeah, we got Mandalorian, and certainly, you know, Marvel and, and the publishers are gearing up for this new uh, Republic stuff. So uh, that's going to be coming right. up early uh, next year. So. You know, there's more Star Wars ahead, and from from lots what they just uh, promoted, you know, there's lots more coming. There's lots there. more coming. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. I cannot freaking wait. I mean, I'm not saying anything that uh, no one else is already feeling here, though. Uh, it's going to be good content. Uh, but then, yeah, after we have that conversation, we're going to turn our conversation over to Dave and uh, talk more about uh, his career as an artist, how he got started, some amazing stuff in there. But before we do all that, don't forget to find us on Twitter at CannedAirPod and on Instagram at Canned underscore Air. If you head over to Patreon or just go to our website, CannedAirPodcast.com, there's a link on there that'll take you to our Patreon page. And uh, $5 a month gets you access to our Canned Air Patreon pod. It's a show we do once a month. You can only get there and I think we're about to hit episode 40 over there. So that's a whole other catalog for you folks. And we have a lot more content coming uh, down the pike on our Patreon page here in the next uh, month or two. So that's something to uh, look forward to. Gentlemen, what am I forgetting? Just sitting around not doing much. Uh, usually, usually on a Tuesday night, uh, <laughs> into <laughs> Facebook, Twitch, or YouTube and uh, see Jack and I play some Jackbox games, hang out with some special guests, and uh, just you even interact with us and possibly win surprises. Hey, nothing wrong with prizes. I'll take one of those. <laughs> Everybody likes prizes, right? Mm -hmm. Especially yep. if it's a t-shirt. You can win anybody with a t-shirt, especially <laughs> me. I'm a fool for a t-shirt. I don't even care if I don't you know, like what's actually on it. If, if it's, I'll take it. Challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> Let's kick it off with this week's Retro Roundtable. <laughs> All right, uh, Star Wars. Randy, you want to kick us off? Spoiler alert, but uh, the last, uh, I think it was the last episode of Mandalorian, they dropped the uh, Grand Master, Thr uh, is it Thrawn or Thawne? Thrawn. 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 Yeah. Dropped his name, which has got me really excited because uh, growing up, I used to read the uh, the book series that had him in it. Um, I forget the, the title of that series, but... Uh, Thrawn, yeah. I think it was. <laughs> Oh, uh, boy. Um, but anyway, it was just, uh, he was a really engaging character in the novels. And uh, yeah, it was just, it's going to be really fun to see him portrayed in The Mandalorian. I agree. Well, uh, they we, ha we haven't hope. said who's going to be portraying him. I don't yeah, know. I, I saw don't... a post the other day that was asking who should be it. And they gave a bunch of different people. And like one of them was, uh, what's his name? that played uh, Bond, uh, Pierce Brosnan, which I was just like, no. He's Man. too old. Yeah, uh, one guy, uh, Jason Isaacs, he was what the, the one of the Snape's dad from right. Harry Potter. 
That dude, yeah. I think he could pull it off easily. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so um, um, I did uh, one of the earliest versions of, of Thrawn, visual versions. I did a poster of the bad guys of, of the uh, Empire for Star Wars Insider Magazine center spread, I think. So it had the Clone Emperor and, and uh, Vader and Boba Fett and uh, Admiral Dalla. And, um, you know, she was from the books. And, and uh, it had Thrawn in there as well. And so I asked the Lucasfilm, you know, uh, what did he really look like? Because he wasn't really described other than, you know, blue and, and dark hair. And, and uh, they didn't really have a description per se. So I went and uh, did some, some research. And what I used for the reference for him was a young Robert Mitchum, oh. which I thought was, was very imposing uh, look uh, to him. So that's that's the reference that I used. I thought it was it fit the character very well, but obviously uh, he's dead now, <laughs> and would be very very old. Um, right. But that was that was my thought. You know, back uh, in the mid six or mid nineties. Uh, um, yeah, I can the character. I can totally see that now that you mentioned that. Yeah, same here. Yeah. So you know, who knows? I mean, it it could very well be that. That he may just be the name out there that, that they use for the next season, you know, as the uh, imposing bad guy, and then not really do anything with him visually, just sort of, you know, be like the emperor. We we heard about the emperor, but never really saw him per se, you know, right away. So, do we'll you see. have anybody in your mind that you would like love to see play play him? No, not really. Uh, I think uh, uh, they've made some really good choices. Uh, on the Mandalorian for uh, actors, you know, playing the characters uh, mm -hmm. so far, especially translating the uh, animated uh, uh, characters to live action. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I think that uh, they will make a good choice when, when they do. So I'm not worried. I'm certainly looking forward to it when we get there. Same here. I'm thinking a very young Anthony Hopkins. Possibly. <laughs> and the, the, uh, uh, the technology is there to do it. He's still alive. Hey, did it in uh, That's Westworld. true. I, I forget about the deep fakes and stuff like that. Yeah, but I'd rather see someone, uh, a new actor. Sure. Play. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so Dave, what yeah. about you? Uh, what comes to yeah. mind when we uh, bring up Star Wars? Oh, yeah. There, there's a you know a million ways to answer that question. I mean, I, I've lived with Star Wars, you know, most of my life. I saw the movie when I was 17 in the theater on opening day. And, um, you know, that influenced the way that I, I look at movies and the way that I look at art. And, you know, through my early career, I just loved the look of Star Wars and, and uh, the, the mythology. And so it's been a part of my life, you know, for a long time. You know, I did Star Wars artwork when I was younger, you know, for myself. I, I just enjoyed the, the, um, the genre. And so it was... Uh, you know, sort of a very pleasant uh, surprise to be at the right place at the right time with Dark Horse Comics to um, uh, be involved in, in first Indiana Jones and then uh, uh, Star Wars with Lucasfilm. And so, you know, it's been more than 30 years since my involvement with them. So that's half my life, you know, uh, working with Star Wars and certainly more than half of my life having Star Wars in my life. So, I mean, that's really the first thing I think about is how good Star Wars and, and you know, Lucasfilm and the fans you know, have been to me and really made made me what I am. So I'm um, sure. certainly eternally grateful for that. Other than that, you know, it's a really fun universe to play in. It's, it's great to do the artwork. It's, it's really uh, uh, challenging because, you know, it, with me, you know, I have a set of standards, you know, set by the films. And, you know, I have to capture that in the artwork that I do uh, because that's what the fans look forward to. And, and I'm a fan, so that's what I look forward to as well. So, um, you know, there's there's always excitement there, you know, through the challenge of uh, creating new and, and interesting art, um, you know, within the, the Star Wars mythology. Um, so, yeah, you know, um, th that's what comes to mind first. And then you start, you know, whittling it down to all the really small, fun things that make it what it is. And, you know, it's it's a whole sort of 
envelope of life type of thing. Sure. And it has to be pretty uh, cool to, uh, you know, have your stamp on something that's so, uh, you know, obviously not, obviously cherished by yourself, but, you know, the world over. Uh, one thing that I had seen online, and I'm probably jumping the gun here. This probably should be something for uh, later in the episode, but something you just said just made me think of it. I think there was a painting you did that had, uh, like, I think it's the AT-80s. Maybe it was on Endor, and it looked like they had been uh, made into, like, logging. Uh, like uh, Right. Yeah, I had done a, a painting of the um, Imperial base on Endor uh, during its construction. As we see the uh, rebels invading the Imperial base, the, the bunker, and then you can see the uh, uh, radar dish in the background and, and that type of thing. But um, uh, my take on that was to show uh, early in the construction. So, you know, I, I created a number of things in that piece that hadn't existed before, uh, the uh, walkers being adapted into uh, you know, moving, you know, construction machines, um, mm -hmm. rather than trying to, to create something new and get it past Lucasfilm, you know, to fit within the, uh, uh, the canon, uh, I thought it was easier to, uh, you know, retrofit uh, some sure. of the existing material to uh, fit. That way, you know, the, a viewer recognizes it, but says, wow, that's a pretty interesting way of, of you know, making it work for the, the story and the image. Uh, sure. So, yeah, that was, you know, the, the widescreen prints, that was one of the um, celebration prints that I did. The widescreen prints that I've done for the celebrations uh, have been very um, exciting for me because I've, I've taken the liberty to work with Lucasfilm in creating images that, that tie in specifically with um, uh, ideas within the film, but uh, weren't uh, actually shown in the film, like the um, uh, sand crawler uh, with the uh, uh, Tuscan Raiders and, and the Imperial, uh, the Imperial troopers. Um, yes. If if you know the gentleman waste piece, uh, that was something that uh, you know wasn't in any type of uh, canon with Lucasfilm. Uh, there was no description of of what might have happened uh, in that incident. And so as, as I got to thinking about it and, and thinking with the, the quotes that uh, Luke and Ben, you know, their uh, dialogue and, and uh, looking over the scene, and I, I thought, you know, maybe it would be interesting if it, if it wasn't, uh, you know, they say it's Tuscan Raiders, but, uh, you know, Kenobi says, well, you know, they don't, uh, they don't travel single file. Well, you know, why couldn't it be, you know, Imperial Troopers in disguise as Tuscan Raiders? And right. so I ran with that, and Lucas was very happy with, with the, uh, uh, the concept of that and, and gave me approval uh, with it. And, and so that, you know, that made it just really fun to be right. able to contribute, you know, a little bit uh, to the mythology. And then, you know, like, like uh, uh, the Battle of Hoth, uh, where Vader's on the... Uh, the snow speeder. The, yeah, and he's, he's poking his uh, lightsaber in there, feeling the force of where Luke was. Uh, in the crash snow speeder and, and uh, you know, we see him actually on the battlefield and, and uh, um, you know, those things are just really fun and they have been over the past few years to be able to work with Lucasfilm and, and uh, create these images that, uh, you know, tie in, they tie in peripherally with the story and you can look at them in the widescreen, you know, prints and say, wow, that, that could very well be a scene from, from, a movie or an edited scene from the movie that type of thing so it's been fun and, and it's it's cool how um i guess like when i that uh at at i'm talking about you know it had claws on the front that was grip that were gripping uh logs gripping the and it just yeah. really challenged my mind because i thought okay these things can be obviously used for so much more than just you know, uh, implements of war, you know, not only could they right. be logging, but maybe on Hoth, there's one that has, you know, a plow on the front of it, or, you know, you never know, like the, it just really challenged your mind within that universe. I, I really enjoyed that. Right. And I, I certainly enjoyed it. I know that the people that uh, I worked with at Dark Horse when, when we were doing all those stories and, and Lucasfilm, you know, gave the writers and, and the artists uh, the, the freedom to do some of those types of things you know that was that made it more exciting you know but lucasfilm would put their foot down you know on on certain things uh i remember um when we were working on a crimson empire 
uh, the uh, um, the Crimson Guard, the elite Crimson Guard, had these uh, double uh, bladed spikes or um, uh, staffs. And originally, Randy Stradley and Mike Richardson had uh, suggested making them double bladed lights lightsabers. And uh, this would this would have been oh, what ninety four or ninety five. That w- that was when Lucasfilm was sort of gearing up for Episode One. And mm-hmm. so uh, they said, nope, no double-bladed lightsabers in your comics. We're not going to allow that. <laughs> oh, and, I see. Uh, yeah, so because they were, you know, holding that on for uh, uh, for Darth Maul. Uh, I wanted to do a, a print of uh, Yoda when he was younger, jumping around, you know, just slicing up stuff with his lightsaber, you know, being, being the uh, uh, young warrior that he probably would have been, you know, uh, prior to his 800 years uh, being old. <laughs> and, uh, you know, this was before episode two. And uh, they said, nope, no Yoda with lightsaber. <laughs> and I said, okay, no problem. So, you know, they had a real good uh, a grasp on what they wanted to do, what they wanted to show. And, and uh, working with uh, the creative people at Dark Horse. Uh, so, you know, that, that made it even more exciting that they cared uh, enough to, uh, uh, to follow these things and, and, you know, make those decisions. Absolutely incredible. I love hearing that stuff. My God. Yeah. All right, uh, Jack, let's cut over to you, Star Wars, sir. I, lately, it's been a lot about the expanded universe making its way back in a little bit here and there. Just how they... I never followed it <clears throat> back in the day. I always felt bad because I didn't know all the, the old lore and stories from back then. But mm-hmm. now that they put the kibosh on of it when Disney bought them, and now they're bringing a little bit stuff back and forth here. They're like throwing, well, Boba Fett for one. And right. then like the Marshall from the Mandalorian, just a little small stuff like that. Well, well, there's, there's you know, a whole world of, of great, uh, characters and, and situations in the expanded universe. And, you know, I look at it uh, two ways. Uh, when uh, Disney bought Lucasfilm, I kind of figured that they would want to start over because now that they owned it, they wanted to make it theirs. Mm-hmm. And so I, I wasn't surprised at the decision to um, throw away the expanded universe. You know, I was asked the question, you know, quite frequently when that happened, uh, you know, what do I think? And I think, you know, if I'm a business decision, that's probably the best decision for Disney. I mean, Lucas went with Disney, I'm sure, because he felt that, that Disney was probably the best place to continue um, building generation after generation of Star Wars fans more so than, than Lucas could, you know, on his own. So I understand that yeah. from a business point of view uh creatively i I think disney has dropped the ball completely up until (laughs) until the mandalorian Uh, (laughs) and and i i think that uh uh you know they just didn't know what to do with it uh it was very very poor uh management on uh, kathleen kennedy's part uh not having uh, a production team you know create a three-part story that they could do as as episodes seven, eight, and nine. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, writing them right. one at one at a time, one after each other, so that each film had to correct or or go in different directions than was within the, the previous film. Mm-hmm. So you know, they just made some really bad decisions, and I, I think saying that that the expanded universe was not canon. Um, put them in a corner, and I think it it took Filoni and, and Favreau to come in and say, "Look, you know, we have this material. Let's start, you know, cherry picking some really interesting things that the fans like and want to know more of, and right. uh, do something with that." And you can see just in the excitement that the Mandalorian has. Um, has given the fans that that's the way you know to go. The, the people who know Star Wars from from a mythological standpoint and a story standpoint, um, you know, creating 
and continuing the world rather than Kathleen Kennedy, who is a producer by nature, not a creative person. And, uh, you know, Lucas heading Lucasfilm, you know, is a filmmaker, but he's also a creative person. Mm -hmm. um, right. So, yeah, there were mistakes made. And hopefully, you know, things are being set a little bit more uh, in the proper direction now. It, right. uh, it it cracks me up. I don't know, uh, Dave, how much you're on social media, but I'm seeing a lot of uh, uh, memes and stuff on there about, uh, you know, John Favreau is seriously hurt. And then you start reading <laughs> yeah. this paragraph and halfway down, it says for carrying the weight of the Star Wars franchise on his back with the Mandalorian. Yeah, yeah it's pretty funny. Same same thing with, with Filoni. I mean, he, yeah. uh, uh, you know, everyone was really happy with the uh, animated shows. And, and so, uh you know, he gets the same thing and and uh, doing the live action now saving uh, the Star Wars universe. So, yeah, I, I see that all the time. And, you know, memes can be funny, but they also can be true. Right. Right. And the true ones are typically the most funny. Yeah, yeah well, well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would have to say my uh, my pick as far as uh, Star Wars goes would be, I guess, part, a piece of a. Uh, Disney's extended uh, new canon would be the uh, Darth Vader comic series, which uh, kind of picks up right after episode three and, uh, you know, shows his first, you know, first days on the other side, you know, his first days at the Emperor's side, getting his new lightsaber, uh, just learning what he's done and kind of uh, accepting that. You you really you right. learn where uh, like red kyber crystals came from. It was such a good book. So good. Yeah, and and you know you have to uh, um, you know thank uh, Lucas. Uh, um, uh, what do they call it? Um, not Lucasfilm Books. Or maybe it is. Uh, they have a good staff of, of people working with them now. As far as the the new continuity, you know, throwing away the the expanded right. universe and, and working with the new Marvel continuity. Uh, they really uh, built a good reputation with with us during the Dark Horse years, uh, and I, I think that they've found that that was a very good way to um, oversee f the fandom aspects of the uh, uh, media, uh, books, uh, comics, movies, uh, keeping it all together so that the fans can come in at really any time, but then be able to investigate, uh, you know, favorite things from, from, you know, the past within the current canon. So right. I think that, uh, uh, you know, a lot of that has to do with uh, Lucasfilm books and, and the people that they have, you know, working there. And, uh, you know, Marvel, uh, I think they, you know, have had a lot of hits and misses in their, uh, in their series. But yeah, I think the Vader sure. series probably has been one of the better uh, series throughout the past uh, couple of years, uh, more so than when they were when uh, the Star Wars book was limited to only uh, information uh, between uh, A New Hope and, and Empire Strikes Back, and now they're sort of sort of handcuffed by being after the Empire Strikes Back. Uh, right. So, I think some of the other uh, some of the other materials is much better, uh, and Vader. You know, is is amongst those. I had the question for so many years, like, why does it matter the color of a lightsaber? Like, why does a Sith have to have a red saber? And there was, I guess, just so much in, about the Sith in general I didn't understand. And um, that series, I mean, and, and maybe it's just, you know, stuff about the Sith that's new with Disney. I'm not sure. But uh, I just thoroughly enjoyed all of it. And not only that, but, uh, you know, his gripping with oh my god have i made a mistake here did, what have i done what have i done what did i uh why did i try to kill obi-wan you know what i mean should i go to him right uh just but then that that collapse of all that i don't know it's so hard to explain but it's so good you guys should check it out if you haven't yeah there's there's a lot of material there and, and uh yes yeah, to be honest with you i stopped reading a lot of the stuff because there was too much coming out uh, same here both, both in the comics and, and the books uh, so, you know, I'll read up on, on Wikipedia or, or uh, Wikipedia uh, if I go. need to, to get some background. Uh, but, uh, yeah, there's a lot of information out there. And, and uh, you know, it, it's fun. It's certainly, you know, for the hardcore fandom, 
they love that type of stuff. And, sure. uh, uh, you know, the, the Lucasfilm is not afraid to, you know, put it out there for people to enjoy. I'm glad they uh, they do. I'm certainly glad they do. Yep. <laughs> um, does anybody have any other contributions to this retro before we move on? Just had a quick mm-hmm. question for Dave. Um, sure. Did you have any uh, involvement in the Shadows of the Empire series at all? Uh, no, not really. Um, I, at one point, was going to do a, a print okay. uh, in collaboration with uh, um, the un- unrolling of the Shadows of the Empire. Um, and there was a lot of missteps uh, in in rolling that out. And so I, I painted half the thing and, and I just sort of set it aside as, as the interest sort of never really snowballed for it. Mm. And uh, I, I felt that um, a, a print wasn't needed at the, at the time. And I, I still feel that, that it's not. I think, I think it, it was an interesting story. And it came out at a, at a time when there was no movies and, and just the comics and, you know, not a whole lot of other media out there. So, but I don't think it's really what, the fans wanted. I mean, they, they enjoyed it, but it wasn't quite there yet, if, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So, so yeah, I, I, that was the only thing. Uh, I actually recently finished that painting last summer, I think. Oh, did um, you? Uh, yeah, I, I do a live show um, a couple times a week on Facebook, uh, just painting. And uh, uh, I, I found that painting in, in my flat file and I pulled it out and it was half done. And I thought, you know, I'll just go ahead and finish it here uh, 20 years later. <laughs> <laughs> it's neat. And, and yeah, so, you know, just a quick plug. If you go to Dave Dorman Artist on Facebook, um, I archive all of the live paintings uh, that I do. So it should be there somewhere if you have the patience to you know, flip through all the live painted. There's a lot of Star Wars that, stuff there too, but yeah, that Shadow of the Empire uh, piece um, was finished uh, finally, and uh, I, I sold it uh, uh, to a collector, uh, but it's never been published. Gotcha. Yeah, the, just for our listeners who might not know what that is, that there was a uh, Nintendo 64 game that was released uh, called Shadows of the Empire, uh, comic book series, and then uh, a couple of figurines. Um, the, yeah, the they little... did, yeah, they did some figures. They actually did a soundtrack. Uh, they had an orchestral soundtrack. To oh, really? Yeah. Uh, there, was, there was quite a bit of, of associated product uh, with it. It just wasn't the film. It was basically all the stuff that goes with the film, but no film. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know, so... Um, uh, yeah, I think that's really what, what disappointed most of the fans is they really wanted a film and to have everything but the film just wasn't quite it. I understand but, that. But, you know, it introduced a lot of different things. It introduced the Black Sun um, uh, cartel, the, the bad guys, and, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Zizor, who was the head of, of the thing dealing with uh, the huts and the underground. And, and uh, I, I know that um, one of the game companies was producing a game that was set in the underground of one of the planets so it was all about uh, um, bounty hunters and renegades and and you know ne'er-do-wells and and stuff it was a first person shooter i can't remember what it was uh it was a number it was like like 1919 or, or something oh, 13, like 13. 13 13 13 right yeah. and so they actually had a lot of that material that was generated uh, through the Shadow of the Empires, uh, you know, background material and such, uh, awesome. building that particular world. But then, you know, they Disney the bought them and then pulled the plug. <laughs> yeah. So, so that <laughs> was that. Disney do. Yeah. Yep. Well, hey, I mean, we're getting to see Thrawn and hopefully in Mandalorian, maybe we'll get to see Dash Rendar in there too. Well, maybe, you know, somebody said they saw his... Uh, uh, his ship in oh uh, really one of the prequels or, or one of the uh, on the sequels yeah so you never know that'd be cool yeah you know I'd like to see Kyle Katarn show up you know because I I painted him uh, for the uh, uh, the Jedi Knight book series and um, uh, he had a very cool ship the the Moldy Crow 
uh, that I actually had a, a model built of because it was a really odd shape and I needed it for reference. Um, <laughs> But, you know, that was a, he was a fun character, too. You know, unfortunately, they retconned it. Uh, he was the one who actually uh, got the Death Star plans and, and you know, got that to the uh, uh, Rebels. So that's sort of retconned now with uh, uh, Jin Erso and, and Rogue One. Um, but, oh, yeah. you know, that, that was interesting, you know, storyline that the uh, Jedi Knight, which was based on the Jedi Knight uh, computer game. Some games I gotta look into. <laughs> right. <Yeah. as> long. <laughs> Heard up and well, very good, very good. So let's just uh shift our attention, I guess, right over to you, Dave. I'm you know, having looked at all the artwork, uh, I mean not all of it, but a lot of it uh, online, and uh I'm just so curious. With a talent like that, you had to have started very young. When when did you start painting? Uh I started painting when I was about fifteen or sixteen. Uh, I had an interest in, in comics from when I was very young. I, I loved the artwork, and that's really what, what got me started was uh, uh, just looking at, at uh, you know, fun books that uh, I was reading. And, you know, to date myself, this would have been the late 60s. You know, great uh, Fantastic Four and Avengers and Captain sure. America and, you know, Jack Kirby and John Buscema and, and Steve Ditko and, and uh, Jim Stranko and all these great artists. And so, you know, I actually didn't, I, I, I sort of collected comics from when I was nine or 10, but I actually didn't read comics until I was probably 12 or 13 because I just love the art. You know, I'd buy it just to look at the art. Sure. And then, uh, um, you know, I started reading them and just sort of got into that, you know, collecting thing. But that was the uh, major influence was 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 the art and, and uh, an interest in, drawing from from that so that's that's how i learned to draw was copying uh those great jack kirby and and uh, john busama avengers and thors and you know just copying those uh, characters and then sure. you know i was a fan of frank rosetta who you know made his uh his mark doing conan the barbarian paperbacks and so you know i was a science fiction fantasy fan you know reading back then you know comics and, and books and uh his his artwork was very influential on, on, in my early days but you know I, I really didn't uh didn't have an interest in, in painting until my drawing got a little bit better and then one day i decided decided you know i'm gonna try painting and, and so i uh um yeah, I just started copying, you know, Frank Rosetta paintings from covers of, of you know, the Conan books, uh, you know, the same way that I copied, you know, Jack Kirby drawings from from the comics. And that was that was when I was like 15 or 16. And, and it wasn't until uh, I was, you know, a junior in high school that I really decided to, um, you know, put more time into it. Back, you know, then it was just a hobby, not, nothing that I, I did. Uh, other than because I really enjoyed it, but sure. as you get into high school, you know, you you start deciding what you want to do, and and uh, art was something I, I really enjoyed a lot. So I started putting more effort into it, and then uh, you know, by the time I graduated uh, high school, I was looking forward to getting a scholarship in football because um, we were uh, obviously I was playing football at the time and. We were a very good team, and, and I was being scouted. But I banged my knee up and, uh, and mm -hmm. when I was a senior. And so that pretty much uh, ruled out, um, you know, my football scholarship. And so, you know, really, uh, when I banged my knee up and, and you know, the, the school said, no, we, we don't want you anymore, you know, about half the way through my senior year, I just decided, okay, I'll be an artist. <laughs> and that's, that's basically <laughs> what I was. You know, I, I talked with my folks and and I had a little studio in my bedroom and I spent all my free time just, you know, at the drawing board, drawing and painting and, you know, letting things influence me, you know, from from outside, you know, science fiction, fantasy, comics, movies, uh, books, uh, those type of things. And then, you know, Star Wars when I was uh, 18, you know, seeing that, that, you know, boosted things. And then I started going to comic conventions and showing my artwork around and getting feedback. So between, you know, 1979 and, and 82, 
you know, I just did my best, you know, trying to, to you know, further my craft. Uh, and I do little jobs locally, you know, business card design and advertising drawings and, and things, you know, for the local community. But, you know, my heart was really set on on uh, comic books and, and uh, you know, painting. So, you know, eventually it was just hard work. And eventually it was making that first sale to Heavy Metal Magazine in 1983. And uh, then, you know, sort of building on that and building on that. And then eventually in 1989 hitting Indiana Jones and then, hmm. you know, directly into uh, Dark Empire with Star Wars right after that. Nice. So, you know, this, this, this genre has always been in my life. It's something that I've enjoyed. And, you know, I found a way to, you know, work that into um, my profession. And so, sure. you know, people, people ask me, you know, how I like to work. And I, you know, I tell people it's the best job in the world. You know, it's, it's very, uh, very satisfying. You have to be thankful for that banged up knee some days, right? You know, yeah, and <laughs> I, I am. <laughs> I am um, as I get older and feel it a little bit more, uh, you know, I, I smile a little bit bigger. <laughs> I, I would say so. I know I certainly would be. Uh, one yeah. thing, you know, the you had kind of talked about the mid 80s there one thing i read on the wicket your wikipedia was that hasbro had commissioned you to uh do over a hundred paint over a hundred pieces of uh, i guess realistic artwork of the gi joe characters for their three inch figure line now right we're huge toy collectors on this end and when i think of realistic gi joes i think of those those explosion, you know, where the character's jumping out of the explosion that was on the backboard of each and every one of these figures. Right. Is, is that the artwork you did? No. Uh, actually, um, to give you a, a brief description of what I was doing, I was working with the research and development department, the R&D department. And what they would do is they would de design the, the characters within the department for whatever year uh, that they were going to be producing, you know, th that set of characters. And so they would design the characters and then they would have an artist uh, prepare a rendering of the character as they would look in real life. Oh, wow. Okay, so those, those paintings were for in-house use only. They were never published anywhere. Uh, they were usually used as display pieces to show uh, the higher ups and the board of directors um, in, in addition to the the toy designs themselves, the realistic painting gave the, the non-creative people a better idea of what the character should look like. Wow, and, that's even and, cooler. Yeah. That's even cooler yeah. than the back so, because that's the birth yeah. of the character. Yeah. So, so I was, uh, I was, I was, you know, hired to do those paintings, those sort of final production paintings. Um, and then, um, uh, you know, they, I'd send them in and they, you know, do their thing. And, and, uh, you know, as, as per my contract, they kept them. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, so that was really a lot of fun, but the, uh, the packaging artwork was done by, <clears throat> excuse me, a couple of different, uh, artists and they were more advertising art. They, they were, were sort of realistic, but not as realistic as I was doing. Uh, with I my opinions, because I didn't have to be dramatic. Um, right. You know, most sure. of those were very dramatic, you know, with the fire coming out or eventually mm -hmm. it was sort of the computer, you know, graphic y uh, pixels uh, explosion and, and things like that. So, so there was a different purpose for those pieces of art. But if you look on, on uh, uh, Google, if you Google my name and, and you know, G.I. Joe, you'll probably run into a few of those pieces. Uh, I, personally published a couple of small books uh, with that artwork or with some of the artwork I should say uh, that I've been selling to G.I. Joe fans over the years uh, but uh, yeah you could find it on on, on uh, Google probably fairly easy. Do you have a particular uh, favorite G.I. Joe you did or one that stood out? Um, not really um, I would say that probably my more favorite of the pieces were the ones that were less superhero-y looking. Okay. <laughs> you so know, they, they, they looked more more like uh, actual uh, battlefield uh, military 
rather than, you know, costumed, colorful villains. Gotcha. Okay. I wish I could give you some names, but one of the things that uh, that usually happened when, when I was working with them is they would have a working name and we would go through the, the uh, process of, of doing the artwork and, and, you know, the production artwork and such. Okay. And then, you know, so, someone in, in production or advertising would say, hey, that's not a dynamic enough name. Let's change it to this guy you gotcha. know, or this name. So the names that I usually worked under were different from the names that actually showed up. So a lot of fans, yeah, your fans say, hey, did you work on this character? And I said, well, I don't know unless I actually see the character. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> the, the name could, you know, potentially have been changed. No, that makes a lot of sense. Oh, cool. That yeah. So Much it was fun. it was fun. I did that for about five years, I guess. And uh, it was run, really fun working with those guys. Uh, you know, and a couple of those guys that, that I worked with in the R&D department went on to uh, work in comics. Bart Sears is, is one of the guys. And Mark Pennington uh, is one of the guys that have been doing comics uh, since then. And, um, you know, a couple of the other guys are, you know, doing like Western art and military art. And uh, there's a lot of talent uh, back then. Sure. Now, some of these uh, concept uh, characters you were talking about, uh, you said they were, uh, you, I, you could probably find some of them in a, a few of your books. Would one of those books be the Rolling Thunder book, I, uh, The Art of Dave Dorman? Because it, it looked like that was kind of a uh, like a career-spanning book. Yeah, yeah. The Rolling Thunder um, Art of Dave Dorman book was a, a sort of overview of my career up until... Uh, when was it published? About 10 years ago? Um, yeah, so it, it covered, you know, pretty much the the early days from, um, you know, first heavy metal cover and then some of the independent stuff. Uh, a lot of uh, my fans don't know that I, I worked with Kamiko, if, if you know the, that name, uh, doing line drawings of Robotech uh, covers. Uh, oh, so wow. I did like like 30 Robotech uh, covers in sort of an anime style. Nice. Uh, in, in drawing. Yeah, not painting, but just line black and white drawing. Uh, so, you know, that was some of the early stuff and, and some of the uh, early paintings for Ecl Eclipse comics. And and uh, then we get into Dark Horse. And, um, uh, you know, yeah, it covers everything. It covers my gaming stuff, the Magic the Gathering uh, uh, material, the, the card art, uh, the stuff I did for Dungeons and Dragons and some of the movie production art and, and, uh, a lot of Star Wars, a lot of Indiana Jones, a lot of aliens, a lot of Predator, a lot of Batman. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's really a, a good overview of my career. Um, uh, unfortunately it was sold out. They didn't do a second printing, but you can still find it on, on, uh, eBay. Uh, if you're looking for it, I've been talking to a couple of publishers and possibly, you know, doing semi reprint or a new version, you know, to update things. And there's been, you know, a lot more artwork over the last 10 years. Uh, so and there's sure. that book only covered maybe a quarter of, of what I was doing, you know, during all that time. So it's a big book. You know, it's like 360 pages of, of dopey Dave artwork. <laughs> <laughs> you could do a 10 year anniversary reprinting with uh, new new paintings in it. Yeah. Yeah, I could. And that's something that, that I've talked to a couple of people about. And, and uh, you know, don't be surprised if that uh, actually happens at some point. Well, I would be excited if it did, because I would uh, love to see this artwork, you know, just Thank seeing you. the artwork from the Star Wars book, like, holy cow, like, you know what you're primed to, uh, to, to be, you know, looking at. So, yeah, I yeah. would definitely be interested in that. You know, Facebook is really the best place for information on that. And, you know, I post a couple of times a week with new artwork and, and uh, you know, new Star Wars artwork and whatever I'm working on. So uh, uh, that's the best place to find the information. If if I if and when I decide to do it, I'll let everybody know. Well, I hope you do, man. I hope you do. And Thanks. we're going to be uh, help directing people over that way. Uh, I was able to find you on Instagram, also at Dave Dorman uh, Artist and uh there's right. DaveDorman.com, and you said Facebook, of course. So uh, all yeah, the many Facebook different is, places for people to check them out. I'm sorry? Yeah, Facebook has a couple of different uh, um, pages. Uh, Dave Dorman Artist, uh, all one word, is the one that I'm usually on, and, and I do my live show on. Uh, but there's Dave Dorman's Wasted Lands, uh, Dave Dorman Studio, 
uh, you can you can search them in the Facebook. But uh, Dave Dorman Artist is the one that that I'm usually on and do do the live stuff. And I, I chat with uh, people, you know, during the live uh, uh, thing and answer questions as I'm working. And, uh, that sounds things like fun. That. I might have to mm-hmm. check in for that. Yeah, it, 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 you know, it's just uh, I usually make an announcement sometime first thing in the morning <clears> whether I'm going to be on or not. And usually it's around 11 or 11:30 Central Time. Um, that I do, and you know, it's an, it's an hour and a half ish, sometimes less, mm. sometimes more. But it's it's fun. It's a way to just reach out to the fans live rather than just yeah. looking at posts. You know, it's so funny as you're sitting there naming off, you know, all these properties you've been involved with. Uh, somebody like me that grew up, you know, the tail end of the '80s through the '90s. I mean, I had so much of your work uh, as part of my just childhood, and not even realizing it. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean, that surprises a lot of people. Um, you know, most most fans know me for Star Wars or Indiana Jones. Some know me only, you know, for Aliens or Predator. Uh, some only know me for G.I. Joe. So, yeah, it's uh, it's it, it makes me feel good when someone comes up and, and, you know, says, oh, I love your Star Wars artwork. And then they start looking at, at the table uh, in front of me and see this. And, oh, you did Batman, too. Oh, cool. And, you know, they get excited. Oh, I've seen that aliens thing. And, and so it's 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 fun, you know, having that diversity um, yeah. and and sharing it with the fans. You've worked in a ton of amazing properties, like the properties of all properties, Alien, <laughs> Batman, Star Wars. The all the good on. ones. How can you go? Yeah. Around? Yeah. Well, I've, I've been fortunate, you know, uh, Star Wars really, you know, opened a big door for me. Uh, I was doing some licensed stuff before that, uh, but certainly Star Wars opened, opened that big door. And once, you, you know, like like a lot of businesses, once you open a door into something that's that's as big as that, you know, other people will look at you a little bit more seriously. <laughs> so, right. um, you know, so I was able to, um, you know, keep my ear, you know, to the uh, um, to the industry, and if I heard, you know, of a fun project that uh, uh, you know was being worked on, I'd, I'd make calls and, and you know see if I can get involved, you know, or sometimes you know someone would see my work on, on, uh, you know, aliens comics and want me to, you know, do some production work for a film or, or, you know, do a gaming cover or something like that. And so, so it, it all sort of spider webs out and, and, you know, all ties in together. But yeah, in, in my career, I've been very lucky to be involved in so many different and varied, uh, types of, of projects and, and, uh, subject matter. How oh, cool. Well, yeah. And again, uh, Got to be thanking the powers that be for that hurt knee, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. You're right. Well, Dave, this has been an absolute pleasure. I want to thank you so much for taking time to talk with us, man. Uh, thank you for being here and, uh, you know, tell us about your gift, man. Uh, it's it's a pleasure. I always love to share. Uh, you know, this year has been sort of hard with no conventions and, and not getting out you know, to, to see the fans. I think that's one of the things that I'm enjoying so much about uh, the live Facebook thing is, is people can, can, you know, reach me uh, if, if they want. It's I like, a, you know, a, a little bit of a convention, you know, a couple of times a week, you know, a little Dave con. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, um, you know, I've, I've been fortunate and I've been uh, very, uh, grateful to all the fans who uh, enjoy what I've done over the years and look forward to, to more that I'm doing. That's freaking awesome, man. Well, congratulations to you on all your success. And thanks again, man. Thanks for having me. You guys are great. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm always here if you want to talk again. Oh, we'll definitely be taking you up on that. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <for sure. Good. laughs> Plenty to talk about. Jack, what do we have on the website, sir? Go to cannedairpodcast.com where you can see show highlights, guest info, listen to the show, follow us on our social media, become a patron, buy some merch, see some more YouTube videos, and if you'd like to be a guest and promote your work, send us an email on our contacts page. And once again, don't forget to find us on Twitter at cannedairpod and on Instagram at canned underscore air. And that fancy little website Jack was talking about has a 
a uh, link to our Patreon page that I told you about at the top of the episode. I'm not going to bore you with the details again. And if you're still here, you've got to remember what I said, right? It wasn't that long ago. It wasn't that long. It was only 55 minutes ago. Come on. <laughs> uh, anything else, people? Anything else I'm forgetting? Just if you're sitting around bored uh, on a weeknight, check our uh, Facebook page out and see if we're playing some Jackbox and hop in and join us. Nice little package. And I think that's going to do it for this week. So until next time, I am Jeremy Colley. I'm Jack Doherty. I'm Randy Hardenbrook. And I'm Dave Dorman. (laughs) Thanks so much for listening, everyone. And remember to be excellent to each other. Oh, no! Don't run! It'll only make things worse! What? Remember, you never want to approach a stray dog, especially one that's foaming at the mouth. Get away from the animal as quickly as you can and tell a grown-up. And knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe! This has been a Canned Air production. 